This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday morning. I'm Tim Gordon. This morning on Sunrise, the increasing need for housing, the work being done in Washington to house more people. Plus, another county gets added to Oregon's homeless emergency. Why leaders in Clatsop County applied to get help from the state. But first, we're going to check in with Chris McGinnis for a quick look at the Sunday forecast. And Chris, a little icy in spots. Yeah, for sure. Temperatures have definitely dipped below the freezing mark at a lot of locations this morning. So be aware of that. If you're about to head on the road, out on the roads in the next few minutes, it's slick out there. This is the, the live look from our uh, Rose City Sky Camera, a little broken cloud cover over downtown. It's 35 at PDX, but let me give you a little snapshot of the temperatures elsewhere. We're down to 32 in Hillsborough. My drive, I live in North Portland. It was slick on our roads, and uh, I had some ice on my windshield this morning. 32 right now in Tigard. Sherwood, 32. We'll slip farther south. Oregon City waking up to temperatures in the low 30s. Mid 30s right now in Salem, Almsville, and Dallas. And I point this out because we also have a band of some snow flurries trying to work its way northward out of Benton and Lynn counties northward into Marion County. So it's possible we're starting to see a few light snowflakes in the air around Salem. This band will continue lifting northward. There's not a lot of ground truth to this yet, so I'm not sure that much of this is reaching the ground. But suffice this to say, there could be a couple early morning snow flurries, especially uh, south of Clackamas and uh, Marion County and Point South. So if you're watching us right now in Corvallis, you're likely seeing some snowflakes. Eugene has had some light snow in the last hour as well. All right, here in the Portland Vancouver metro area, I've got us generally dry this morning, but remember it's 35 at PDX icy spots though in a lot of locations early on temperatures quickly warm above freezing sunrise by the way is at 642 and then we do have a shower chance in the remainder of our Sunday forecast. Tim high temperatures today get into the mid 40s later this afternoon. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. And let us know about that ice. It's important. Well, this morning, Portland's major crash team is investigating a fatal crash that left a pedestrian dead. The crash happened shortly before 6.30 last night at the intersection of Northeast Sandy Boulevard and Northeast 162nd Avenue. Portland police say the pedestrian died at the scene and the driver involved stayed. This is the fourth pedestrian fatality of the year, and it's the eighth traffic fatality, according to PPB. Well, now to our homeless crisis. A bill in the early stages of the Oregon legislature would give $1,000 payments every month for two years to certain qualifying homeless people or those at risk of homelessness. Now, as you can imagine, it's catching the attention of a lot of people. Blair Best dug into some of the details for us. Senate Bill 603 was all the talk on this corner of Old Town Wednesday morning. I actually think it's actually a very good idea. I really do. It would help a lot. I'd be off the street. The bill in question, the People's Housing Assistance Fund Demonstration Program, where for two years, monthly $1,000 payments would go out to people living on the streets, those at risk of becoming homeless, those who make less than 60% of the area median income, or spend more than half their monthly income on rent. It's a glimpse of hope for people like Elena Archer. I'm currently living in a tent. Right now, she gets $600 a month. Um, I'm on disability and the 600 a month doesn't really cover much of anything. I mean, with the rent and prices of food and everything else, it, it's just really hard to survive out here. As of right now, what do you spend that $600 a month on? We try and get food, we try and get blankets and everything to keep us warm out here. The necessities, the phone bill that we have. So I'd be able to have food, water, shelter, be able to get a full job. The monthly payments would have to be used for things like rent, food, and emergency expenses. A group at Portland State University will be doing research on the project. Now we asked them, will this money be handed out as cash or vouchers? How will it be tracked? How will someone living on the streets with little resources get access to it? They tell us since it's so early on in the process, I mean, there's only been one hearing on the bill so far, that those details haven't been worked out yet. The old me would have said, no way, you know, it's BS. Longtime Portlanders who are fed up with the government's response to this crisis are cautiously optimistic. I don't see the need for another levy or tax to impose upon ourselves. Um, I think the, that it's, the money's there. They just got to control how, you know, monitor how it's spent and how it's, 
you know, that it's really helping people. Do you have faith that our local government will keep their promise on doing something like this? Not a whole lot, no. So they haven't proved a lot to me. I really wish they could, we could elect smart people who can get, really get things done without, you know, bureaucratic messes. Well, if the bill passes through the state Senate and House, it would go into effect next to January. Well, Clatsop County has been added to Governor Tina Kotek's statewide emergency declaration on the homeless crisis. Kotek made the declaration shortly after taking office, but Clatsop and other coastal counties were left out. The declaration only applies to places where the homeless population increased by 50% or more from 2017 to 2022. Clatsop County leaders say they've seen the highest rate of people who are homeless per capita in Oregon for the past eight years. Now, initially, that did not appear to be enough to qualify, but county leaders applied to be included, and the governor added Clatsop this week. Lincoln County is also applying to be added. Well, Governor Kotek is also urging the legislature to allocate millions of dollars to help Oregon food banks. They're in dire need of support as more people face food insecurities. This past week, extra SNAP benefits through the federal COVID-19 food assistance program came to an end. Oregon families who relied on that extra money for food are asking for help at local food banks. The Oregon Food Bank says it's facing its own challenges to keep shelves stocked. We are going through the highest rates of hunger that this country has seen since the Great Depression, since the 1930s. So 90 years ago was the last time we were at these rates of hunger. It was driven by the pandemic, the economic recession that came after the pandemic, then inflation, <laughs> um, and the drawback of government benefits that were meant to help during the pandemic that are happening right now. Well, Governor Kotek is asking the federal government for a $7.5 million grant to support the Oregon Food Bank. The Food Bank says this amount would help them get through at least June. All up in Washington, Governor Jay Inslee just announced that more than 1 million homes need to be built to support housing needs over the next 20 years. The Building Industry Association of Clark County, which represents more than 12,000 people in the construction industry, just broke ground this year's Parade of Homes. They tell, us our, they tell our Bryant Clerkley that nothing is slowing down demand. A groundbreaking for Clark County's longest running new home show, now in its 45th year. This year, the Parade of Homes is in the Ashbury development in Philida, a neighborhood in Vancouver. The Building Industry Association and GROW, the Vancouver-based landscape company, are hosting the event this year. As 30-year mortgage rates have hit 13-year highs, some builders say buyers are doing whatever they can to avoid taking a loan. If those buyers have the option to use cash to buy, that they're doing that now instead of borrowing money for you know uh, the, high, uh, the higher interest rates. The Washington State Department of Commerce says more than one million homes need to be built to support housing needs over the next 20 years. That requires about 50,000 homes built each year. The homes in this neighborhood are luxury, but the building association says all types of homes are needed in Clark County. A lot of the affordable housing is already out there. It's been out there for 20, 30 years. So if you don't build more housing, what do you do? You artificially inflate the cost of the existing housing. These homes will be decked out with the latest fixtures and features. Builder Tony Marnella, owner of Marnella Homes, says they aren't seeing a downturn in home buying because of high interest rates. And so to have interest rates in the six and seven percent range historically is is actually pretty normal. Bryant Clerkley reporting there. Well, the Parade of Homes show will officially start September 8th and it'll run until September 24th. Now, if you're in the market but are seeing those high interest rates, well, there are programs you can apply for that can help lower your payments. You could talk with a local realtor or lender about that. Well, still to come on Sunrise, a leap toward progress. Portland's Audubon Society is going to change its name. And the reason for that change and what group leaders hope to accomplish going forward. We'll be right back. Oh, also, I should tell you, you know you can watch Sunrise anytime you want on KGW+. Plus. It's true. All of our news is on Roku and Amazon Fire. Just look for KGW and add us to your home screen, please. And stream Sunrise on your schedule.